All right, today in calculus, we're going to talk about functions. Uh, we want to start off there and, and kind of build with a refresher. So a function f from a set d, that's your domain, to a set y, your range, is a rule that assigns a unique single element. Okay, so f of x is an element of y. To each element, x is an element of d. So for every x, there is exactly one y. Okay. So here's our function. So we have y equals x squared. So our domain is the values that we can plug in to this. So our domain is from negative infinity to positive in infinity. Okay. Uh, our range, though, is going to be our smallest value is going to be 0. And our largest value is going to be infinity. So we would have bracket 0, comma, infinity. And that would be our range. Now, in our second example here, we have a problem. So we have a, an issue that we can't plug in zero into this. So our domain is going to be the union of two sets. It's going to be the union of values that are smaller than zero and bigger. So we have from negative infinity to zero, but not including it, union zero to infinity. So we're taking that zero out, okay? And then our range would be from negative infinity to zero, because there's no way I can put something in here to get a zero for, for y, uh, union uh, zero to infinity. So this is kind of just talking about domain and range. There's We've talked a lot about domain and range before. Remember, um, in this uh, interval notation, we're talking about the values that you can have in there. Okay, so we want to kind of get into that mindset of what are the values we can have in our range? What values are we seeing? Okay, so that brings us to piecewise defined functions. So piecewise defined functions are functions in which part of the domain is defined by one equation, another part by a separate equation, and so on and so forth. So uh, one of the more Familiar ones is probably the absolute value of x. So values less than zero, it's actually negative x. Values greater than greater than or equal to zero, it's just x. And so you get that v shape. So here we have a piecewise function. So we have f of x equals, so it has these three parts to it. So if x is less than zero, we're going to use this equation, negative x. So for values less than zero, we're going to use negative x. So values from zero to one, so zero is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to one, we're going to use the equation x squared. And then when values are greater than one, we're going to use the function of one or the equation of one. So these values here are, are boundary points. So there are boundary points. Now we're going to match these up. So if you remember, uh, when we're not equal to, we're going to use an open, we're going to use that circle to indicate that the value is not there. Okay, But I'm still going to plug this in. I'm going to plug this in and see what I get here. So if I plug in 0, I get 0. So what I'm going to do is at the 0 value, I'm going to just put a nice circle there, indicating that it comes all the way up to 0, but does not include it. And then... We might end up filling this in later. It kind of depends on our graph. I need to pick values that are less than zero. So I know that this is a linear equation, so I'm going to pick negative one. If I pick negative one, negative negative one is positive one. So I'm right here. So I know now I have this graph that is coming from up here, traveling down towards zero. Okay. So now I have values between 0 and 1. So these are my boundary points. I'm going to plug in 0 here. 0 squared is 0. So I get to fill this circle in now because my second piece says it works. Now, if you were graphing this, you probably wouldn't have a nice big dot there. Yeah, you'd have a nice uh, point that come to 0 and then see what's going on in the next part. So now, if I just plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, but it technically isn't a line. Remember, this is a parabola. 
So it's going to have a little bit, of, if I put in a half, a half squared is a quarter. So it's going to have a little bit of curve to it. I'm going to kind of over accentuate that curve so we can see it. And then um, I'm going to plug in, so I've gone from zero to one. I'm now going to go to my third piece of my piecewise function. I'm going to pick zero is going to be my, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick one. One is my boundary point here. So I'm going to plug one in, I get one. Well, it already has that value. So now I pick values that are bigger than one. Two, if I pick two, I get one. It's a constant function going that direction. So this has three parts to that function. Values that are less than zero, uh, greater or equal to zero, to less than or equal to one, and then greater than one. And so we have all these different parts in there. All right. So when we're dealing with piecewise functions, we want to take that kind of apart. Work it almost in three separate little smaller graphs where you're only going to plug in values less than zero. You're only going to plug in values between zero and one. You're only going to plug in values uh, one and greater than one. And these are, we're going to plug these values in and they're going to be our boundaries. But we're going to put circles there unless they connect with these. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about increasing and decreasing functions. So increasing function. So this is definition. You're going to see this a lot in Calc when we talk about this. We're going to talk about kind of formal definitions. And then we'll kind of talk about it kind of in, in layman's terms. So if f of x sub 2 is greater than f of x sub, sub 1, whenever x1 is less than x2, this is increasing. All this is saying is as my x's go up, my y's go up. Okay, increasing. As I'm traveling from left to right, it's going to go up. All right, decreasing. So let me put a little arrow. So that's, if I ever see the graph kind of do that, it's increasing. If f of x sub 2 is less than f of x sub 1, whenever x sub 1 is less than x sub 2, 1, this is decreasing. All this is saying is as my x get bigger, my y's are getting smaller, okay? So I'm going to have decreasing. So my first uh, y value is bigger than my second y value. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of look at, take this idea of increasing and decreasing, and look at our graph over here. So as I'm coming here, I always want to kind of go left to right. So as I'm going left to right, if I'm traveling down this way, I'm traveling downwards, so this would be decreasing. So I'm decreasing from negative infinity to zero. Okay? So I'm decreasing down to that. I can put it in brackets. Okay? Um, So, and then I'm going to look from zero. So if I look here, I notice that I'm going up. So I'm increasing from zero to one. Now what happens after one though? Am I increasing? Well, I'm not going up. Am I decreasing? No, I'm not going down. This is constant, so it's neither increasing uh, nor decreasing. Right? So the last thing we're going to talk about is even and odd functions. So what an even function is, is if I have f of x and I plug in a negative x, I'm going to get the exact same value. So f of negative x equals f of x. So it, it kind of gets rid of the negative sign. It doesn't matter about, matter about the negative input. It's going to give me the exact same answer as the positive on it. An odd function is if I have f of negative x, that's going to equal the negation of f of positive x. So if I plug in 3 and I get an answer, if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get the negation of when I plug in 3. We'll kind of look at an example of these. So 
Here's my f of x. I have f of x equals x squared plus 1. Now to see if it's even or odd, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a negative x, and then I'm going to compare it to my original function. Okay? So I'm plugging in a negative x here. Negative x squared is x squared plus 1. I compare this to my original. Is this the exact same thing? If it is, then it's even. If it's the negation of it, it's odd. Well, in this case, these match up, so this is an even function. And we'll kind of look at um, an example, kind of what this is really saying, where sometimes it's hard to see by plugging in just x and negative x. So let's kind of look at this again, but let's plug in a number so we kind of get that idea of even and odd. So let's say I have f of 2. That's 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. Now let's say I plug in negative 2. So I need to take negative 2 squared plus 1. Well, negative 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5. So they're giving me the exact same value. Okay? That's what an even function is kind of talking about. So now we're going to look at g of x here. Well, I need to determine if it's even or odd. So I'm going to plug in negative x. I get negative x cubed plus negative x. Simplify this. Negative x cubed gives me negative x cubed minus x. Is this the negation of this? Yes. So this is an odd function. Okay. So we'll kind of take this back here. Let's go. Uh, let's look at this as in terms of numbers. So you can kind of see that, that idea. So let's go ahead and plug in 2, and I get 2 cubed plus 2. Well, that gives me 8 plus 2, which is 10. Now I'm going to plug in negative 2. Negative 2 cubed plus negative 2 equals negative 8 plus negative 2, which is negative 10. So notice that these are the negation of each other. So, so if I knew that this was an odd function, if I, if I knew the answer to 2, I'll, to get negative 2, I would just negate this. Okay? So that's uh, even an odd function. That's increasing, decreasing uh, function piecewise and understanding what a function is.